We had Roman and Solo and the Usos and the Bloodline Civil War, which we talked about. And here's my recommendation for this match. If you have time, watch the whole match. If you do not have time, you, you can, can watch very last, you, safely skip you can the first watch, 20 minutes you, of this you match. Can wa- you can watch the last five minutes and you really see the match. They went 33 minutes, I believe. 32, 32 33 minutes. 32, 57, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the first the first, the 20, first 20 minutes. The minutes were nothing. It was just, we got to put in Ner- some time. We got nerve holds and, and everything. Yeah. I mean, it was fine. I mean, and the crowd, of course, the crowd was easy, so everything. But it was very slow for most of the match and then it picked up really well so yeah finally jay gets the big hot tag with about 10 minutes left and the ref ends up taking this bump and he's supposed to bump to the outside but actually jay and or he was either jay or roman someone fell into him as he was bumping outside so his leg got caught and it looked like he just tore his groin off the bone but he ended up getting back in, so I guess he was fine. But, man, that guy screamed when he got caught in the ropes. So the ref is out, and then Roman's distracted. He turns around. He eats the 1D. No ref. Fans count to 11. He's just down the entire time. Yeah. Visual pin. So well, the, the, thing, those... the thing is, he, he was he was pinned for five, and then they got off, and the, they kept just counting. Yeah. So it was really pinned for five, but they just counted to 11. So this was one up top for the double splash and Solo crotches Jimmy. And then Solo and Roman hit double Yurinages. Solo spikes Jimmy. And then they grab Jay and they hit a combo spear and spike. And Roman beckons to Solo, bring him over here. So Solo drags both of them. And they're going to do the same deal they did like a year ago. He's going to stack them and pin them. Well, the thing was, is, is, is here's two, there's two things that actually really were you know, they, they when they were telling the story, like on the pregame show, and and this was really key, is the two things they pushed were when he beat Edge and Brian Danielson and stacked them up together. So they really pushed that as part of the story. So then when they did it in the match, it meant more because Paul Heyman promised that was how the finish was going to be. So they do that spot, and then it's not the finish. Well, they 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 stack them up, and they set this up so well. That as as the ref is climbing over to count, the fans just start chanting bullshit because yeah. these fans were sure because not only did they they build it up in the pre-show, but just like the guy got spiked and speared at the same time. And yeah. they had just seen Roman take a visual pinfall. So like these fans, there was not a doubt in their minds. This is it. This is the finish. He's stacking up the Usos and he's pinning them and they're chanting bullshit and when I, I those Usos kicked out, that place exploded. Well, it was only Jay that, that kicked out. No, they only... both kicked out. Did they really? Yeah, they both. Because I went back and watched it. They both kicked out. Yeah. And that place went crazy. And Roman's almost in tears. And so they go back to beat him up again. Well, so the, and... the, other, the other thing I just want to point out is the other thing in the pregame show that they pushed so hard was Roman hasn't been pinned since December 15th, 1990, uh, 2019. Yeah. They pushed it over and over and over. They've never pushed that before, so that was the other thing. So they pushed, they pushed the thing for the finish, and they pushed the thing for the near fall. You know, they basically gave both away, just so you would know if you didn't know. You know what I mean? So it made the pin mean more because they told you that story. They didn't expect, like, say, Brian Danielson beats Okada, right? Nobody said anything over and over and over again. Okada hasn't been submitted in a match since 2015, you know, because they didn't want to give it away. And also, that's not what they would do. But whoever, you know, whether it's Heyman, whether it's somebody else, like when they're telling the story, they feed you the story. They feed you the two big spots in the match ahead of time and basically give them to you so they mean more when you get them. So finally there at the end, uh, they did a spot where Roman spears Jay and Jay kicked out. And Jay did the same thing that Roman's done before, which in, which is as he kicks out, he also hits a low blow. So he hits Roman with a low blow. Uso super kick him multiple times. They super kick Solo. They double super kick Roman. Jay gets hot tag. He goes up top. He hits that big splash. Ref counts one, two, three. The place goes nuts. Michael Cole practically had a stroke. Everyone's just going crazy. You know, they celebrated. They beat Roman Reigns. They push he hasn't been pinned in three and a half years. 
I mean, the first half of the match was just putting in time, but the second half of this match was absolutely incredible. And uh, what a finish for the show. What a way to set up SummerSlam. Thought it was awesome. Thought it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the right finish. I wouldn't say, I, I mean, I thought the match was great. I mean, like, great. But it was really all about the finish. You know what I mean? It was like the match itself was, I mean, they had a great crowd. The match itself, to me, was pretty much what you would expect, but they set up those two spots to mean something. And, you know, you got a finish that, you know, they made that finish mean something by pushing it so much earlier in the show and, and everything like that. They said it, I mean, it was great set up, but I mean, it wasn't like it was this outlandish match or anything like that. To me, it was just... Well, the, the last you know, 10 minutes were quite outlandish. The first 20 know, minutes were not outlandish at all. I, I thought it was normal, really good. You know, I mean, like I'm watching it going, like, this is really good, you know, really good. And then by the finish, it's like, this is great. But it's not like a match where I'm going for 20 minutes and going like, man, this match is unreal, you know, or something like that. Like, I wouldn't call it like, whatever. It was a great match. I just didn't think it was like, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't call it match of the year or anything. It was not match of the year. No, of course not. Yeah. Any other uh, press conference notes? Uh, Not really, other than Cody base. He's, he didn't say he wasn't interested in Seth's belt, but he sort of did. He said that, like, he could, you know, he could win Seth's belt, but the story is winning the belt. The reason he came. Like his total, he Cody is total storyline while making it seem like he's not total storyline, but his storyline is is that the belt that his father didn't win, which is apparently Roman's belt, that's the one that's the story. So basically, you know, you know, basically, and 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 almost has almost has said it's next year's WrestleMania, which is the plan right now. So it's it's kind of like that's the the basic deal but he you know something happened where the you know he was asked about the sets belt and he you know he, he essentially he tried- said it would be really cool to win it but he wanted to win the belt that his father had never won which would be the wwe belt yeah. which they call the wwe undisputed universal title so that's the one that he wants to finish yeah. the story he talked about his his uh the documentary they're doing he says it's got all the you know all the storyline about that so See when that yeah. comes out. So he did that, and then, uh, you know, nothing else really. You know, just Triple H saying that, uh, you know, they, they they set their indoor gate record, or not indoor gate record, because a lot of the WrestleMania's have been dome stadiums that have done much bigger gates, but they set their arena gate record, and that, um, um, you know, the other thing was, you know, just the, oh my God, what did John Cena? He put us in a terrible situation. Yeah, okay, yeah. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate you, Wow. Sean. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow. Look at oh, that, everybody. Wow. Holy smokes. That qualifies. That's Prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, they say that Washington is a hot spot for UFOs. Is there any connection between aliens and Bigfoot? The animals are aliens. What? So you're telling me that my cat is from another planet? Yes. Due to Brian's birthday, Brian versus Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy looked a foot taller than Brian. He's not a foot taller than me. God. He's got the big poopy hair. He's, he's maybe. What is that noise? This was sure. with you and Vinny against uh, Chris Drysack and Ideal Mexican. 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 Yeah. Yes. Brian pulled uh, Chris's panties down in the back. Yeah. His panties. <laughs> yeah, he saw his Drysack. <laughs> S-A-J-W-N. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, 
all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.